What's up everybody? Working on a 16 Chrysler 200. Girl says she was driving along and the check engine light popped on. There it is right there. When it came on, she said the brakes felt funny, engine missed a little bit, and her first instinct was to go get the oil changed. I told her, I said, that's okay, you know, there's nothing wrong with changing the oil, I said, but it's probably what, that's probably not gonna fix that problem. So she dropped it off and we are test driving it now. Let's see. I do feel a little bit of shaking when I hit the brake. Uh, it's probably just rotors, maybe pads and rotors. Doesn't feel too bad though, other than that little bit of shaking. The check engine light, the car seems to be driving okay. I don't really feel a misfire. Maybe it's just an EVAP code. It is a Chrysler and they're pretty much famous for the EVAP codes. And as of the check engine light, when I first started it up, I felt a little bit of a misfire, but driving it, I don't feel a misfire. Possibly, you know, sitting in idle, I feel it shaking. It's either gonna be a misfire or an EVAP code. So let's get it back in. Let's throw a scanner on it and let's see what we got. Hooking the scanner up, the OBD2 connector is located just to the left side of the under the dash. And we're gonna hit OK. Let's do a code scan. Uh, haven't done any repairs yet, do a pre-scan. Not right now, I don't need that. <laughs> An active grill shutter performance. Body control module has right low beam control, left low beam control. Our only concern right now is going to be the check engine light. Battery voltage high, circuit above threshold. Let's start with the engine code. Active grill shutter performance. That's funny. Intelligent Diagnostics. Replace radiator shutter assembly. Let's see how many miles are on this car. The miles are 122,490. So at 75,000 right here, 122 is still the top replacement. There's no TSBs on it. Place radiator shutter assembly. Let's go to smart data, see what smart data tells me. Let's see the ambient temperature. Hmm. Ambient temperature is 48 degrees. I guess that's close. Engine coolant is 192. Speed's on high for the intake. Intake air temp. 91 low temp radiator is negative 83 the active grill shutter is open right now so right now it's commanding the grill shutter to be open so let's go see let's take a look under the hood Let's go to functional test. Let's go to an active grill shutter test. Seems logical, doesn't it? This procedure will allow the user to open or close the active grill shutter. Let me cut the engine off, turn the key on, engine off. So if anything, I can at least hear the, maybe the motor working. Well, one thing, it wasn't an EVAP or a misfire, was it? So let's open it. An error occurred. Active grill shutter test. Let's exit that. Try it again. Oh, come on. Work with me here. Start engine and get to 550 RPMs. Let's open it. Test in progress, select forward, to continue, exit the back. Uh, 
bastard. Seems like whether I open it or close it, nothing changes. Let me hop on the computer and do a little more research on this. So if I'd have done this to begin with, I'd have saved myself a lot of aggravation. Something must have went through the bumper here. And if you look, this is your active grill right back in here. And you can see it's, it's busted. So something went through it and broke it and that's why it's not working. And you definitely need this because what happens is as the car needs more air, that grill will open up and allow more air to go through. Pretty much easy fix. So next thing is I'm gonna call the customer, let her know what I found and see what she wants to do. So check this out, I was doing some reading. That code P1D73, one of the complaints the customer has was it states the vehicle vibrates and that was one of her complaints also. So I guess that code can cause a vibration. To confirm the customer's complaint found the vehicle vibrating, connected the scan tool and found the code, which we have here, the P1D73 AGS performance. Performed a visual inspection of the radiator, shutter assembly and found no Obvious faults, use a scan tool, commanded the radiator shutter, and found the radiator shutter was inoperative. Use a multimeter, check the for presence of voltage and ground of the radiator shutter assembly, and found both were present. Back probe the radiator shutter assembly, signal terminal, monitored the signal with a lab scope, scan tool, and commanded and found it was bad. And to fix it, they replaced the radiator shutter assembly and verified the vehicle operated properly. The customer's concern did not return. So that's some good information. I guess when we fix that, she'll lose the vibration that I feel too sitting here at idle. So here's what's weird. Think about this. We do a lot of wrecks here and some of your Fords have that electronic grill behind it to help with airflow. And when they get in a wreck, a lot of times they break. And when they're broken like that and we're driving them in and out of the shop, we don't see anything vibration wise. Funny, this Chrysler with that electronic grill broken has that issue. That's definitely weird in my book. But anyway, I've seen weirder shit. Just kind of waiting to hear back from the customer. When they give me the approval, we'll yank that bumper off and get it replaced. So I just got off the phone with the customer and they approved replacing that shutter grill. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Let's get into it. First thing I'm gonna do is get this thing up in the air. And remember what I always say, if you had to jack your car up, always use jack stands, safety first. So we got some eight millimeters along the bottom. So Novi, if you think about it, it's crazy what little holds these bumpers on. Even down to the fenders. You pay all that money for a car with plastic clips. Alright. Once you pull the splash shield back like this, there's a couple little screws up and under the bumper here. They're also eight millimeters. I say they're eight millimeters. You get my eyeballs on, you better look. And that torques. So the one underneath here is a T27. Because you know, a 10 millimeter or 8 millimeter bolt wouldn't be sufficient. You had to swap it up on us. Once you get that Torx out, you just pull out. It'll come like this and work it loose around all the way around. Just snaps in with clips. Let's get the other side out and then we'll get the bumper off the rest of the way. The only thing I'd be careful of is when you're doing the bumper and, you, and it's coming off. If you look back up in here, there's going to be some wire you're going to have to unplug. So just be careful. Like I say, you, you don't want to drop the bumper or scratch it up or nothing. Same thing. Two bolts. 
three bolts. Pull it back. A bear, and it's that ain't it. There we go. Now, the only thing I got going for me on this bumper is if you look right here, she's already jacked it up, ran into something here, so <laughs> I don't think I can mess it up much more. Set this carefully on the ground. Just get yourself a little cord. And hold it up. There we go. <laughs> Look, you can tell she hit something hard. The breather box under the right under the bumper is Got a big hole in it. All right, to get this clip off, you're gonna press this side in right here, best you can. You're gonna slide it back as far as you can and unplug it. Just like that. Simple as that. So we got the new inside grill assembly, the one with the vents on it. We had to get it from the dealer, and that was probably a little over $500, believe it or not. Um, I told a girl, I said she should have contacted her insurance because she got damage in her bumper, you know, which caused that. So she must have hit something or somebody hit her or whatever. And she said she had a $500 deductible. And I said, okay. So, but you need to take care of it because that's like say this without this this stays closed or open too much or whatever this controls your airflow going through the condenser and into the radiator so let's get it on first thing we're going to do is unplug it On the compressor? Yeah. Maybe we can stick a little Teflon tape around the plug. I've got some liquid Teflon right there in my second drawer. It's just a couple of push clips that go around it. It's not a big deal to get them out. A little V tool, pop them out. All right. Then we got a couple little bolts that hold it on. So we got some seven millimeters that hold it on. Nice if I put it in the right direction. Now she's got some broken fins in here, but nothing you can do about that. I'm probably gonna cut break this one off because we don't want it going like this into the new unit that we're putting in. So we're gonna cut this one off, I think.
Let's get the new one installed. <clears throat> there we go. Sweet. I'm hoping that she didn't short nothing out when she wrecked it or hit it or whatever. I mean, because it's possible when they got stuck like that and it's commanding and on or off, you could have blew a fuse or shorted something out. So we're hoping nothing like that happened. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook the, I'm gonna bring the bumper around there, start the car up and command it on and off and let's see if we can get it working. Make sure you push that red tab back in. You want to make sure that these clips are old, they broke, moving them out when you went to undo it. So make sure you cut them off. And definitely go back with a wire tie or something like that so the wire is secure because you don't want that flapping around when you're driving around. That's going to cause a number of problems. And you know, I really didn't have to cut these off, to be honest with you, but it just looks neater. It's a cleaner job. How's that sound? Is that better? So my buddy just bought a 67 Camaro. We're getting ready to start restoring that. I'm a lifelong buddy, actually. I've known him all my life. And he bought a 67, bought it off of eBay. And uh, he brings it in, he brought it and sh had it shipped down here to the, uh, my warehouse down the street there that we store cars at. We're going to bring it in and we're going to do a restoration job on it, make like a good driver out of it. He's going to paint, I think, candy apple red. Um, we're going to put suspension on it. He's, he just ordered the suspension, like $8,000 worth of all new suspension. We're going to get all that upgraded on it and uh, make sure you stay tuned to the channel and subscribe so you don't miss any of those episodes. All right, let's test this bumper out. So let me tell you about Red. I've, I've taken the scanner and I've commanded that shutter to open up. And if you come over here, you can see it's closed. It's not opening. I started doing some testing on it and I pulled a schematic inside and the red wire is a hot wire. The ground was good. The other wire is a bus. That's the one that sends the communication open, close, open, close but this is your hot, that's your ground. I've taken this lead here, I've connected it directly to a battery. And when I put the two together, it opens fine. So I need to go in there and find what fuse is blown that's causing this issue. Matter of fact, when you hook that up, you can hear the fans got quieter because with this closed, that fan's gonna run a lot harder. So let's hop up there. I think it's fuse number 69. Let's go check it out. So that fuse for that shutter grill is located right here. And what a stupid name, shutter grill. Who the heck thinks of this crap? So if we take the test, let's just run it and check the fuse right quick. That's one of these three prong fuses. You know, it's gonna have, you should have ohms between all of them, basically. I got the meter set on ohms. If I touch it together, see how it reads good, right? So let's go to, this side looks like the good side. Let's check this side out right here. We're good on that one. If you look right here. All right, we got an open circuit. So let's replace this fuse and I think we're good to go. 
So I went to the stock room to get one of those 10 amp three prong fuses. And of course, you know, we're out of them. The last person used it, didn't restock it. Not a biggie though, I got them ordered. We'll get it here, get that fuse in, double check everything and get this car back on the road. Catch you in a bit. So I got the new fuse in. I've got the shutter grill hooked up and I've got my scanner hooked back to it. So, and you can actually hear the fans not running a million miles a friggin' hour. So let's go back to functional test. Uh, let's do, um, let's do this shutter test one more time. Let's just verify everything. Hit continue. It's collecting the data. All right, so we've commanded it on, open, and it's already open. So let's go back over here. Let's go to here. Let's command it closed. And it is closing. All right, we're good to go. There is another step we need to do. We need to do, and I guarantee you the car's got to be off, and I got to get a ladder, climb up in this bitch. Let's do active grill shutter replaced. <clears throat> this procedure will clear and continue. The vehicle must not be running during this test. All right. It says the active shutter action has been reset. Hit exit. I've got all the modules reset, so we're good to go there. Next thing you do is put the bumper back on the car. That's just a rinse and repeat. You don't need to watch me do that. The next time you'll see me, I'll be on the test drive. All right, we're on our test drive. No check engine light. Been driving for about three or four minutes now. Everything's looking pretty good. And um, I don't even feel that vibration anymore. Remember, I had that vibration when you're sitting in idle. Uh, that's gone. And if you remember, she also complained about when she hit the brake, the vibrations. Well, I got it back and I looked at her brakes. Someone put, someone put brand new pads on the front and the rotors were just toast. So when she was coming down off of high speed at 55 and hitting the brake, she was feeling that shimmy in her steering wheel. As soon as I get past into some clear traffic here, we will try it out and see. Right, here we go right y'all. Yeah, we're good. We're golden, baby. All right, guys, that is it for this video. I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Catch you later.